Welcome to Value Investing Webinar. This is a new initiative brought to you by Quantum Mutual Fund. Uh, buy low, sell high. That is all there to it. That is all that you need to be a successful investor. But when we go about investing, we try some. We, we are normally tempted to try something different. Try something, you know, buy something high, which is at a high and try and sell something even at a higher. That is not our natural instinct. Just try and look at you know, your neighborhood marketplace and see how a housewife is haggling for the vegetable. 40 rupees a kilo for gobi might be, a, you know, might be a compelling buy or might be an attractive thing to buy. At 60 rupees, it'll be a buy uh, of a re at a reasonable price. And at, eight, at 80 rupees a kilo, it just might be a no. So uh, think about it. That is how we are configured. Uh, value investing is all about finding things cheap of a reasonable quality and how do you go about doing it this and it works it has always worked it, it requires but it requires understanding and the noise in the marketplace is very distracting uh, you don't you are always driven the other way try and look at something which is at a high and spotting something and a story or something which is fictitious might be a real story try and sell something higher at a higher level it may work it may not work this series of webinar is there to help you understand how to go about investing what is value investing and we will be inviting experts to talk about it today we we have with us iv subramaniam he has been with quantum mutual fund or amc uh, for over two decades uh, he's here to share his insights how he has evolved as an investor his, his understanding of things, his understanding of things based on presence as a, as a participant in the real marketplace. Welcome to Thank you. Thank this you. In value investing webinars. So give me a summary of all your understanding in the last 22 years. How do you practice value investing? Today? So it, it goes back to, you know, looking at company management, company uh, fundamentals, uh, looking at either the asset values or trying to understand the earnings power of the company. When I say earnings power, we don't try to predict too much into the future. Mm -hmm. we, we will probably look out two years ahead, mm -hmm. try to normalize certain things. If the company is uh, having peak margins currently, then we may bring it down. If mm -hmm. the company is depreciating its assets at a lower rate, we may bring up the depreciation rate. We call this a normalized environment. Mm -hmm. So based on that normalized environment, we come to a fair value of the company. So we may use a price to book, we may use price to equity, a, any of those metrics. And once you get a sense of the fair value, I will buy it only at a discount to the fair value. Ideally, I would like to buy at a 40% discount. Mm -hmm. But there are certain businesses you will never get it at a 40% discount. Like say consumer staples. A consumer staples getting it at a attractive valuation is difficult mm -hmm. getting at a discount is even more difficult so in those kind of cases we are okay with a lower discount we mm -hmm. say we would be okay with a 20 percent discount okay. rather than a 40 percent discount so that's how we practice you so you work companies, on a, you arrive at a value you arrive at a value fair value and yes and then we look at a discount to that and that's what we, we do uh, you have investors you have a domestic fund yeah. and then you and you ran your pms and then you have foreign investors investing in india yeah what is the difference of perception of their understanding of or expectation of value investing or the way you work? Do you find a difference between the domestic investor and the foreigners who invest here? I, I actually don't find uh, much uh, difference. Uh, uh, the, the reason being that the, uh, the kind of uh, investors you have in the mutual fund is very, although they may be different, but if you have communicated to them enough times as to what you are up to or what you are doing, then they get a sense of the what we are doing in the mm -hmm. sense they understand the value style very well once they understand it then there is no difference on mm -hmm. the international side you know they understand value investing because they are institutions they have people who have followed this for a kind long time so kind of you know mm -hmm. but it's very important for us to get the right kind of clients if mm -hmm. you don't get the right kind of clients then you will have this problem of they not understanding our style and then you know moving away so we are very careful as to who comes into our mm -hmm. client list and that goes to even on the retail side. So we mm -hmm. talk a lot, we do this path to profit where we meet retail investors and the idea is to communicate what we do, why we do, why certain managements we avoid, 
why certain companies we are only willing to buy at a certain price mm-hmm. so once they understand it then i don't see any difference between a regular investor and uh, like you gave a classic example of buying a vegetable right yeah, yeah. Uh, so 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 it's something like that once they understand what we are up to then they understand the different price levels uh, may not suit them so then then there is no difference so at the heart of investing. value investing is buying something of a reasonable quality otherwise it's not value yes uh and they are never available cheap more yes. so in a growing economy like india where everything changes so rapidly for and the kind of premium being paid so how hard it is to practice value investing here so i i will not agree that it's uh, uh, it's always difficult you have to search a little more there may be periods when it may not be available like for instance over the last one year one and a half year if you look at our performance and if you look at our uh, track record mm-hmm. we have not been able to buy too many new names mm-hmm. uh, but if i look at a longer period if i look at the last 15 years we have been investing i think peri- there are times when time you period. get you get it cheap certain segments by its very nature is very difficult to get at a value very deep value for instance consumer staples mm-hmm. you know their pe ratios are like upwards of 50 60 70 times so there you find it difficult but even there i have found cases where once in a decade you get okay. you go back uh, maybe in 2006 7 at one time hindustan lever was probably available at a 5% dividend yield okay now that's yeah. very difficult but it's a once in a lifetime yeah, opportunity a you get so, so you get that mm-hmm. so so you do get uh, the quality stocks and then i don't uh, say quality is only there in consumer staples as i said if if a if a cement company makes uh, good profits compared to others and if it is available at a decent price it's a good quality company good quality management which you would like to buy at a decent valuation so. uh the kind of market that we have seen over the last one two years or uh, three years you know value finding spotting value gets difficult and then you underperform and then you know how do you manage this behaviorally because you know it requires you know you're suffering you're underperforming competition is at a certain level it's also a business yeah. so, uh, so suffering is a very powerful word so you know and as it happens suffering in the sense that peers are prospering yeah, and you I, are actually know, struggling so as in other areas when you are ignorant about what you are doing then the pain and suffering is a lot more not more so once you understand what you are doing once i understand and my analyst my team we understand what we are doing what are we trying to do by value investing mm-hmm. then the pain becomes less of course there are questions of course there are peers who will do well but if you are very clear as to what you are doing what steps you have been taking to invest then I, we don't suffer that much mm-hmm. so so frankly in our office we hardly discuss the under performance you ask any of our teammates they might not know today whether the market is up by up or down. 100 points or down by 100 points well our focus is just going so you have been able to build a culture sheet. of yeah we have been able to build a nice culture, culture of, of people no who short term orientation no no short term orientation mm-hmm. uh, so in fact even if i sometimes uh, uh, um, tempt people with a short term uh, investment opportunity the team will come back and you know mm-hmm. sort of say no this is not our style this is not the way we should go about okay. doing it so it's a nice culture we have built so so you have to communicate a lot the best mm-hmm. way to avoid any sufferance is ensure that your customer knows what you are doing what if the customer does not mm-hmm. know what you are doing then it's a problem mm-hmm. so it requires you know a lot of patience yes and uh, uh, you know staying patient to stay patient you know while uh, running an open end fund where you are being you know many a times people question that this is you know uh, value research itself provides you of course we provide you know the numbers yes. how you stand up and see that how we have done yes. how your numbers stack up so so it is it is a um, uh, environment which we have to face mm-hmm. but again the here the point is communicate okay go and meet your investors during good times and bad times don't go and meet them only when we are doing well mm-hmm. we go and meet them when we are not doing well some people ask us uh, questions as to why we are not doing well we tell them why, how is our style and why mm-hmm. we don't do then there is sort of uh, acceptance in the, uh, mm-hmm. in them so that give that allows us to be patient but if we don't communicate mm-hmm. and i leave it to somebody else to communicate who may not communicate with the right message mm-hmm. then it becomes a problem then the clients will ask questions which you are not able to answer properly so the key thing is really to communicate with the clients on a regular basis in your you know long standing experience of investing uh you spot a value 
and you think that this is a great company which is out of favor for for variety of reason uh, and maybe for a real for for, for a for a legitimate reason and uh, you buy it and it remains like that yeah. it you know it turns out to be a trap yes nothing happens to that company it was out of favor and remains out of favor yes what do you do to avoid this so i i from my experience i i can tell you that we cannot avoid it completely mm-hmm. but we can try to reduce mm-hmm. it in a sense because you have learned over the years as to what kind of traps you will fall into you can bring the number of those kind of stocks to very few mm-hmm. but you may still fall into that occasional value trap mm-hmm. where everything looks good the stocks look cheap and uh, you you think that there is a catalyst <coughs> to unlock the value but that catalyst uh, does not take place mm-hmm. in which case you are stuck uh, so we have had experiences in the past few years uh, you know in a few stocks but now we are able to reduce it it's okay. much lower than what we used to have in the experience early, is now. early 2000 yeah. experiences <coughs> can you cite an example of the older value trap which you got trapped and you know finally gave up so that, okay this is a trap It's yeah good so to move on i now. i will not name because you know we have this uh, okay. we can't name it but uh, there was a, 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 a software technology company which mm-hmm. uh, we thought was doing well they had a great uh, product and uh, we bought into that stock that stock did uh, very well for us Uh, and then the management uh, believing that they have the the ability to sell any products uh, started acquiring other companies mm-hmm. and uh, so when we looked at the product profile of those companies it looked like a terrific fit mm-hmm. uh, but at the same time those acquisitions were being made by debt mm-hmm. so they were buying through debt and uh, we were believing that those products will be able to pay off the debt and there was enough catalyst because it was a company which was more into the banking space and bank banks were using lot of technology so we said uh, the stock is cheap the products are good the banking sector needs these needs these products and therefore you know mm-hmm. it is attractive to stay invested and that's when we gave a long rope to the management we mm-hmm. believe that it will be able to turn around but unfortunately many of those products did not take off the way mm-hmm. it did and we were a little slow in reacting we thought they will do well and we got into a trap mm-hmm. right now we got into a trap because we were neither able to buy more mm-hmm. with conviction and we thought that they will be able to come out of it and we stayed mm-hmm. uh, over there eventually we had to sell it at a loss okay. so 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 here is a case where a value trap we fell into by our own actions mm-hmm. we were a bit slow in you chose uh, to actually uh, fall slow, into yeah, that slow, trap slow, yeah. yeah exactly <laughs> so the so similarly there are other companies where you may be able to buy it at say uh, half the value it will cost to set up a new company mm-hmm. but there may not be any near term triggers to unlock that value mm-hmm. so then again it's a value uh, trap so now we move on to you know our viewers question the visitors of value research online who have registered and posted their questions for you sure uh, animesh has this question how to know whether a company's management is good or bad can you actually give three points yes yeah, so or something you know which actually works yeah, as a so checklist you, so you will see uh, as a retail investor you may not get the opportunity to go and meet the management or you know interact with them mm-hmm. uh, the best way is to read as much as possible about uh, that management's history so now of course with internet you know you can google and you can use wikipedia to find mm-hmm. uh, families and if you find uh, there are cases where you know they haven't treated the minority shareholders very well all there are controversies relating to say en- environmental related issues or the board composition has been changed these are all publicly available information which you mm-hmm. will get or let's say the auditors are being uh, changed every few years then i think you should be a little careful I, you cannot jump to a conclusion they are good or bad but definitely you have got to be very they careful are red flags yeah they, they are red flags and uh, something something may turn out to your shock so those kind of managements are clearly avoidable audible uh dilip has this question how can we participate value in value investing using mutual fund so the so it it doesn't matter how what vehicle you use whether you are a pms client with a specific sum of money or whether it's an open ended fund it's a style which can be practiced so so our job is to keep on looking for stocks which meet the criteria 
the clients may come in at different points in time mm-hmm. so let's say i have fresh cash coming in today and the value stock which i bought a year back is already up 100% and maybe i see an upside of only 10% mm-hmm. then the new cash we may not invest in that stock we will allow the weight to go down but suppose we still see an upside of greater than 20% the reason we took 20% is over the next 2 years if you if you look at long bond at around 8% mm-hmm. Two years, sixteen percent. You add some risk premium. Mm-hmm. We thought at least you should get eighteen to twenty percent kind of returns. So then the new cash we are able to invest in the same stocks. Mm-hmm. So you can practice it even in a mutual fund as mm-hmm. long as your metrics is very clear as to when to invest. Uh, Satya Prakash has this question that what is the difference between value and growth style of mutual funds? So uh, the key difference is in the case of growth. Uh, the the fact, uh, manager will actually focus a lot on how much is the company growing and therefore he is willing to pay a little higher and in some in some cases a lot higher because that company is growing a value investor will generally look at the current situation will see a, a lot of the past and and will look at the future but he won't be willing to pay so he will he won't be willing to pay that high kind of p p premium p which uh, premium which it uh, requires so that's the classic uh, difference so the mm-hmm. value investor will look at the asset value will look at the earnings power value but may not really look very far into the future and justify while in a growth investor may be able to justify because the company is growing at 10 20 15% mm-hmm. or whatever now that's a key difference between value and growth uh anil has this question that investing is about buying low and selling high but how to predict what is the low and what is the high for a stock yeah so you That's cannot that's a big question <laughs> yeah so so you cannot predict you know what is the absolute low or what is the absolute high in in, in value parlance we say that you know when stock keeps going down and we find value we it is like catching a falling knife you don't know how long it will cut you after you buy so there are cases where we think it is low but uh, you know it may go even low lower so you cannot exactly predict but if you have a sense of valuation if you have a sense of pe ratio or price to book and you find that attractive then i think you should go ahead and buy it and if it goes down further and if your conviction is still the same mm-hmm. maybe you should add uh, even even more so it's very difficult to say that this is the low and this is the high similarly on the higher side a value investor will typically sell early right he won't wait for the mm-hmm. peak so even after you sell the stock may run up uh, for quite Go some further. time mm-hmm. but that's a challenge typical challenge of a value mm-hmm. investor uh devdas has this very interesting question will value investing strategy work in a growing economy like india you know because the market itself is configured for growth so is it advisable to keep a value oriented fund in one's portfolio yeah it is uh, it is um, it's a good question and it is perfectly valid to own uh, uh, value uh, I- investing funds uh, because in many cases what happens is while we are a growing country remember that uh, competition can bring in new type of companies certain managements might be better than other managements and therefore you will have choices um, uh, also sometimes near term disappointments can bring down the share price very rapidly and that also could allow you to buy into those stocks so i'll give you an example i won't name it but there are certain certain times in tech companies we see that if they miss their quarterly numbers by a few paise we have seen the stock price coming down by 10 15% yeah, yeah. and similarly if they give a and it happens uh, every quarter every quarter <laughs> so <laughs> and similarly if they if they tell you a muted growth prospects then also you will find the stock reacting very sharply mm-hmm. now you are a guy who is looking long term who who understand that the business cannot change so much within a day then it makes sense to buy into those stocks so while we are a growing country you will get value opportunities in in many mm-hmm. many sectors uh this is a very basic uh, and a important question how to calculate intrinsic value is there a formula to it how can we know whether current price is a value buy so th- th- there are uh, methods to it uh, so uh, for instance one could look at the balance sheet uh, and start with uh, the balance sheet numbers uh, balance sheet as you know is typically uh, written in a historical cost basis but suppose you were to value those assets at current prices then you will know that there is a big difference between the balance sheet with current prices 
versus balance sheet with historical prices and if the market is quoting more mm-hmm. based on the historical book value then clearly you know that there is a, a value available over there similarly you can base it on earnings you can base it on what we call discounted cash flow which uh, discounted cash flow has lot of assumptions to it so there are, there are some pitfalls but there are these different theories available by which you can come to a conclusion that this appears to be a fair value mm-hmm. and then as a value investor you don't want to buy it at fair value you want to buy it at a discount to the fair value so that's why you apply that 20 30 40 percent discount and then and then buy it here is the question you know which uh, which i am actually tempted to take it sure and uh, from n v shrinivas rao is value investing a good option for investors approaching their retirement age within the next 9 to 12 months and in fact i'm getting little tempted to answer it myself a part of it yeah uh, please <laughs> why don't you answer like yeah that. because i would like to answer a part of it because yeah. you know uh, uh, retiring in next 9 to 12 months i think you should be approaching it a little differently if you are going to depend on income from your investments in retirement in 12 months time then you need a completely different approach if this is going to be a long term investment you are not going to depend on it on a for a month on month you know to derive income from it uh then it can well be a long term investment and in investing in equity whether you are a value investor or a growth investor it doesn't matter investing in equity in retirement is important because that is the only way to beat inflation because if you put all your money in fixed income your capital remains constant so i'm just giving the primary framework of you know investing but uh, assuming that somebody is retiring yeah. and he you know a part of his money has to be invested in equity sure then value investing is the way to go yeah so first is i i i completely agree to the points which you which you said that you know when when you are in retirement your allocation needs yeah. to be a little different Uh, but value investing definitely will 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 suit whether you are buying it at a young age or whether you are buying it at a later stage the key point is what is your temperament uh, uh, value investing will suit certain kind of people a growth investment will suit certain kind of people so so if you are a guy who don't want to see too much volatility and you who, who wants to see that your portfolio is reasonably uh, stable then maybe value investor has got more buffers in it to protect than growth while growth can grow very fast uh, value may not grow fast but value can give you that sense of comfort that it is growing at a Stability. steady steady mm-hmm. pace so so irrespective of the age it is your temperament which should tell you whether you want to have a growth or a, or a value investing mm-hmm. this question is from joseph i am 50 year old returning nri i can invest around 50000 per month for the next 8 to 10 years to build my retirement corpus what is your suggestion so uh, you know maybe you yeah, should answer, I should answer it. it's more of a i would say that you know uh, india i i actually tend to uh, i'm a mutual fund fan uh, i'm a mutual fund champion so i would say that you know there is, there is there are merits of growth investing so but va- value investing must be a definite component of any portfolio and this is the way to actually diversify your style the reason why you invest in a mutual fund is that you are able to instantly diversify your investment the reason why you should have a value invest value fund in your portfolio is that if there is some calamity happens there is something which will work as a shock absorber so it provides you the stability a uh, difference in style and over a long period of time everything has worked when we look at you know yes. if you look at you know your That's own true. fund yes over a 10 year period numbers look very impressive on a short term basis in a racy market they look very disappointing in some other market they actually come on top uh, but for investors who are regular they are making their their allocation investing regularly i think value investing if you are investing for the long run value fund, value oriented funds the relatively conservative or different uh, ori- that you know these funds they tend to be they tend to present great opportunity for averaging because ideal fund is that while you are investing it should be cheap and when you need your money it should be expensive you know yeah. buying low and selling high right. and that long term orientation of an investor itself does the job i agree with you that uh, you know it's a, yeah, even at the age of 50 it's still a good idea to invest in mutual funds and you can have a basket of yeah. mutual yeah. funds as you said thank you subhu for being with us today in the inaugural uh, session of this value investing webinar 
Thank you, Dhiren. Thank you, Value Research, for this opportunity. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risk. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.